95% of you watching below Grand Champ are not stuck because of your mechanics. You're stuck because of your play style. Over the past two months, every game of my road to SSL, I would see multiple players that on paper had the mechanics to rank up, but just couldn't win because of their play styles. So today, I want to talk about something that everyone at the low ranks overlooks, and that is how to solo queue properly. If you don't know me, I'm known for being a top 0.1% coach myself and for using strategies like this to help over 2,000 players to date rank up inside Rocket League's number one live coaching program, the Grand Champ Roadmap. Inside, we specialize in taking gold through champ ranked players like you up to Grand Champ in just six weeks or less. But at the time I'm filming this, we just sold out our 125th seat of 125 that we had reserved for upcoming January. 2.0 launch. But since I still have loads of DMs to get back to, and we've got five days until launch, I told my team we're opening 10 overflow slots. So if you want access, this is the last call. DM me on Discord with the keyword call, and we can talk through the details. My Discord will be the first link down below, and let's talk worst solo queue mistakes. Mistake number one, side positioning. A super common case I see is when two players are pushing up the field onto offense. A lot of low rank players are tempted to position to the side of their teammate who has the ball. I think it's because we naturally expect a pass to come and we see pros doing this, but the truth is players are rarely ever passing the ball. Even if they want to, they usually can't do it consistently or quick enough. What often happens when you position to the side of your teammate, especially in 2v2 as you challenge, is you invite the opponent to challenge early because they'll realize that if they dunk you, nobody's last back. That's why what I found is better is just always covering the worst case option when you solo queue. So when I'm coaching players, for example, if you ever see your teammate pushing up the field, it's fine to be a little bit to the side of them. Of course, you don't want to completely overlap your coverage, but I always recommend you stay a good distance behind ready in case you see the opponent challenging. Yes, we all want to receive the pass and get the redirect goal, but at the low ranks, that's a one out of 100 plays. You're going to win much more if you position behind behind your teammates, trust me on this one. Number two, avoid straight line rotation. Especially if you play 3v3, one of the most common mistakes that you wouldn't realize was biting you unless somebody told you is rotating directly up and down the field. When you're playing solo queue, and let's say you're taking the ball into your opponent's corner, when your time on the ball comes to a finish, what a lot of people with good intentions are tempted to do is just rotate straight back from where they came from. The problem is, if you rotate straight back where you came from, your solo Q teammates who should be positioning behind you if they're listening to tip one are going to have a really tough time entering the play and reading when to go. You risk bumping into your teammates, collecting the same boost you already collected and missing out on a lot of opportunities to disrupt the play. So after you commit in the corner, make it your default to rotate across the play, look for demos, pick up boost, and do a wide rotation behind your teammates. This will make sure you cover them, there's no confusion with who should go, and just making your movements super obvious like this will help your teammates play better. So bottom line, play simple yourself, and your teammates will play a rank or two up on what they really are. Number three delaying time. Delaying time is a concept that I think very few low rank players understand. And it really became apparent to me how important this concept was when I queued ranked 2v2 with V1's Com. In my 30 days with pros, every time Com got the ball on the backfield, I noticed how Com would wait to push up until I got behind him. This was super interesting for me. I figured a high ranked player should just always go, 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 right? If you're better than everybody in your lobby, you should just play mechanical and outspeed them, right? Not really. You see, the thing is, if you ever get the ball when you're back in your corner and you see your teammates committed up, you have to understand that you're technically at a disadvantage. You could be in a 2v1 for a little while. Instead of just always trying to take the ball up the field, if you notice your teammate is overcommitted upfield at any point, you want to take as much time to delay the play before you bring it to a challenge. That way, by the time a 50-50 or some sort of play does happen, even if you get beat, you have backup. 
up. This might not seem significant, but trust me, if you ever see your teammates committed up, play slow, avoid taking the ball towards your opponents, and just chill, especially if the ball's in your corner. Choosing your battles like this will bail out your teammates even if they suck. This is one of the biggest keys to solo queuing effectively, delay time. Number four, limit your time on the ball. This might sound counterintuitive. When you solo queue, you want to limit the amount of times you repeatedly go for the same ball. The reason for this is because players at the low ranks don't understand rotation very well. And if you have, let's say, one or two people behind you, and you're going for your third or fourth touch on the ball, a low ranked player is going to get anxious, they're going to creep up behind you, and the longer you stay there, the more you invite them to push up too far, to commit for the same ball you're going for, and you can't do anything about it because they're behind you and you can't see them. Sure, at the higher ranks, you should just go for the ball when it's yours and hopefully your teammates will respect you. But if you're below, let's say champ one or even champ two, sometimes it's better to make the obvious play rather than the best play. If nobody's there, fine, go for the ball, but try to limit how many times you hit it to once or twice and always be the person behind your teammate that's making the decision about whether to go rather than being the one in front where you can't see your teammates and you have no control if they're gonna double commit right over the back of your car. Try this if you ever Ever notice your teammates double commit and I'll save you more than a few games number five and I think I saved the best tip for last never go all in in your opponent's corner of all the things in this video if you walk away with anything I want you to understand this because I think it's the single thing that helped me rank up the fastest through diamond and champ the mistake a lot of low ranked players make is relying too much on their teammates when they solo queue. A super common situation I see is a player who gets the ball, flips into it to slam it off the corner, and the ball centers out to nobody because their teammate's not there. Now you're overcommitted in the corner and the opponents are taking the ball down the midfield. In these situations, I get why it's tempting to just slam the ball off the corner and try to center it for your teammates. But when you're solo queuing, you have to play like your teammates won't be there. Whenever I'm in the opponent's corner, I make it a point to never stay there for any more than two or three seconds. And even in the worst situations, I will absolutely try to avoid flipping in the corner because you have to understand when you're in the corner, your entire half is behind you and most 50-50 outcomes are going to be to your detriment. Instead, I recommend you rarely ever commit in your opponent's corner. You want to use single jumps, no jumps at all, or if you have to flip, flip in ways where your car will be flipping across the field or back towards your side rather than towards your opponents when you center it. This is going to keep you in charge of your lobbies and make sure that you're the actual one who determines your rank, not whether or not your teammate was in the right position. On the same note, and this is just a bonus observation if you made it this far, you want to have the same amount of caution when your teammate centers the ball to you. Especially if you're somebody who just sees a center and thinks that you have to go for it, I want you to avoid committing for center balls from teammates unless there is literally no opponent in sight. This is just an observation, and of course, if it's completely safe, take the goal. But something that I've noticed is that 90% of goals at the low ranks are not coming from outplays on offense, they're coming coming from over commits and then just free opens and breakaways. Okay, those were five things you need to avoid solo queue, at least from my experience, but I'm nearly certain if you implement these things, just pick one to put into your next game, focus on it, and I'm sure you'll see progress. Or if you're sick of solo queuing, you should join my Discord and get teamed up with somebody. We're the largest improvement Discord, plus it's completely free to join, and you can always leave whenever you want. So join that, take a look around, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks, guys.